Today, I'm attempting to make a replica of the Pip-Boy from the popular game and TV series Fallout. I've just finished watching the TV series and really enjoyed it. So when Creality sent me their Falcon 2 Pro laser cutter to test, I thought this would be the perfect way to use all the functions of this machine and see what I can make with it. I want to create a structure made from layers of laser cut wood sheets, where there's a space for my phone to fit inside and I'll use the phone screen to replicate the Pip-Boy. Everything will then be painted and I'll create some animation to go on the phone screen. Let's get started. I'm going to take some quick measurements first. Everything will be built around my exact phone size. Then it's into Affinity Designer. I'm trying to think in layers as the laser cutter will cut these shapes out of thin sheets of plywood. You can see I'm using different colours here to help me imagine the depth of the model. I can export my plans as an SVG file and import it into Blender. By adding an extrusion to each layer, I can replicate the thickness of the wood and then arrange the sheets into a stack. With a basic metal texture, I can start to get a 3D visualisation of the shape of the design and I've spotted a couple of areas which can be improved. Next steps are to produce a cardboard prototype. This is where laser cutters really excel over 3D printers, as I can cut through cardboard like a hot knife through butter. It takes me less than 10 minutes to cut all of these shapes out, and as I stack the pieces together, I can check my phone fits and get a great idea of how this is going to work. Then it's back into Affinity Designer to add some final details such as the text, which I can engrave using the laser at a lower power to give some excellent fine detail. It's also time to name my replica. As it's being created with laser power, I thought the Zap Boy would be a perfect name. Before I cut the pieces of plywood, let's take a look at the Creality Falcon Pro 2. Firstly, you'll see it's a complete machine with a fully transparent cover. This has two massive safety advantages. Firstly, as there is no laser beams leaking out of the machine, it means you don't have to wear safety glasses or be worried about getting eye damage from the laser light. Secondly, it means that the smoke and the fumes from the machine can be safely vented outside, preventing you from breathing in anything toxic. This laser is a 40 watt unit, making it very powerful for a diode laser, meaning that it will cut through thinner material faster, and it also has the capability to cut through thicker material. Creality have also supplied a 1.6 watt laser module, so if you need to do some fine engraving with a super fine beam, then that's possible too. The case has a built-in light and camera, which means you can see the laser bed in light burn. This means you can easily align the cutting with your pieces of material so you can maximize the use out of them. Whilst the integrated air assist cools the laser while it's cutting to reduce the risk of it being scorched. Finally, the thing I really like on this laser is the drawer. It catches all the small pieces which fall out as you cut out shapes of wood. It's really easy to open and clean the empty bits out, much more convenient than using a honeycomb bed. It doesn't take too long for the laser cutter to cut out the pieces. A quick test fit shows a problem with the dial window revealing the edge of the phone. So I'm going to amend this and print another one out. The next step is the glow up. It's pretty easy, but a bit messy. I'm using a roller to spread the glue thinly on each layer before carefully positioning it above the previous layer and then using some clamps to hold everything firmly together whilst the glue sets. It's really pleasing to see it all come together. I'm giving the model a coat of primer followed by a coat of silver spray paint. Once that's dry, I've borrowed some of my wife's watercolor paints to try and make the model look aged and worn by painting blacks and browns in the crevices. The final step is to get the screen and dials working. So I'm jumping on the Mac to use Apple Motion to create the graphics and animation for the screen. I'm using a template of the model superimposed over the phone screen so I can get a good idea of where everything should fit. Here it is, my finished Zapboy. 
I'm really pleased with it. It looks so cool. The animation on the screen and the dial going up and down. If you'd like to make one of these for yourself, I'm giving away the SVG files for you to cut yourself. You can find the link in the description below. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.